Hi guys and welcome to Angling For You and today you're joining me the fantastic Messingham Sands on Swan Pond. Now, paste. We know that I absolutely love paste. But I'm in a situation where I've not fished like this for quite a while. It's maybe just the length of the pegs are different and maybe there's some fish in it. But today we've got a spare peg to my left and we've got a nice flat board that's against it that is beautiful. I'm going to take the camera actually up close to it and show you what that looks like before we go um, to fish it. But what I'm going to do is go a little bit through my paste um, and the way I prepare it. I know we've done it before but we have got Special G um, from Bait Tech. Now this is a little bit different to some of the other mixes I've had. It all mixes the same way, but they all have different textural things. The adrenaline, the dynamite, they all have their own mixture when you put them together. So I'm just gonna mix this one together like I normally do. And I'm gonna mix um, more than I need because um, my and Glyn will both be using it as well. Um, so normally I wouldn't mix this up unless I was doing it for a long amount of time. Now with any paste mix, it's always the same. Water first, paste second now you can a lot of paste are one-to-one -one, so you would add the same volume of water to the same of the paste i'm going to show you today and uh, doing it a way that allows you to understand consistency which means when you're making it if it doesn't exactly go the way you planned you'll know how to change and adapt that so all i do to start off with is just make the hole a little bit bigger i go and shake so it covers pretty much the surface and I start to to mix that up and really quickly I can see the consistencies turning soupy this is too wet it needs a little bit more it's gonna soak and absorb this really quickly as you'll see pretty sharp now you can see that's absorbing it it's really essential that you mix this round even though you think it's done mix this round and get all of that particle into it you don't want any dry spots and as far as i'm concerned now that is done for this part now so we're going to leave it we're going to leave it for around five to ten minutes while we get plumbed up and we get set up um, and then we're good to go now the end consistency is going to be like this this will stiffen because it's going to keep absorbing and we'll need to add more water to it and when i drop it on my hand i want it to create that flat bottom and that's the consistency today is a soft dish that i'm going to be fishing but within 10 minutes that's not going to be like that that's going to be too firm uh, and we'll look at what we do next to make it not that way to allow you to fish it softer uh, which is what we need to do today so we've left it for a few minutes and the magic of editing, um, it uh, goes by in the blink of an eye. Now you can see it's still a swingable, what I would say a swingable pace this. Just if you want to mould it and you want to swing it out in a waggler or you want to sort of drop it in and out, but that's not the consistency I want today. Now fishing up to the board so I can get away with a slightly wet paste opposed to if they can get in behind it and you get more fish in there, you might want it around that similar consistency. At this stage, you can add, but you cannot take it away. So add your water little by little, because if you add too much, then adding ground bait, you have to wait for it to then hydrate it, you know, dehydrate itself, um, and then you can add more water to it again. So it's always good to be a little bit in the air of caution, because uh, it does soften quickly when, when the water does absorb. And this time, doing this bit, is the time that you need to get it right. You know, th this is the bait. Um, you can get, the rig is obviously very important as well, but the, the actual product is what you're catching the fish with. It needs to be right. And that just takes a little bit of effort before you start, and then you're good to go. That's getting there now. And it's a lovely soft mixture is special g and you do need that kind of ground bait um for, to make a paste because if you get sort of your aerated ground baits and your cage feeder ground baits a lot of them are full of bread and that's no no good uh, for fishing paste it'll just disintegrate so we're getting to a, a moldable but but soft paste now you can see you're dropping it 
and it's creating a flat bottom that's the kind of consistency that we need we're going to have a little uh, tub there to dab your hands in a water that's always a good thing to have uh, what we'll do is have a quick little dabble and show you whereabouts it is on that peg that we're fishing uh, before we uh, have a little jog through the rig and fingers crossed get in there and have a few fish So we're coming down to the peg and you can see there's my peg to the right there and we're fishing across and there's a lovely little paddle on the corner of this pallet and I'm not going to step on there because I've put a little bit of sweet corn in and that's the bait we're going to feed today which is a little bit different and we're going to fish tight to that paddle and hopefully that's going to do some good fish. Right guys let's go through a few essential bits when fishing the pace. Now and a strong elastic um, if you're in open water you can get away sort of 15 18 um, depending on what size of fish um, this is a 19 hybrid sounds big but it does stretch um, and obviously we're fishing to an area where there's a pallet so we do need a little bit of um, control now this is guru engage um, seven pound all the way through to a size 12 midi cap extra strong now that's really important i use a, a straight through rig with no uplinks um, no weak spots just pure power um, and that's what i've always done and um, that's just how i fish now the float is different it's a carp pellet now normally i would have one of these bad boys on uh, which is a preston one uh, pace float which is about just a little bit bigger than the float that i've got on it is shallow there and you could get away with using a poly ball which is just like a little foam ball i ain't got any and i've only got a yellow tipped pace float which means i wouldn't be able to see it against the white water so i've had to put a um a uh, a carp pellet on but it's absolutely fine and we'll just, we're not gonna we'll get away with it there's no problem there um it's a it's heavy enough it's buoyant enough so the other thing is a pace pot now i've just gone on to these and i absolutely love them um I've, <laughs> I've used loads of smaller pots and battled away with them for ages and i've i've, I've finally gone to them uh, and they're the preston uh, pots uh, pace pots and they're just absolutely top top dollar um i love them um, and that is really essential and effectively I, i'm left-handed so i'll mold the pace and drop it into the pot uh, and then i will tip that way now what i'll do is to show you how that's done now for me it's uh, about getting yourself organized so we've got the pace we've got the water we've got the corn now you could use pellets to feed so like i said today we're going to use corn trap underneath your arm so you've got a strong it's not going to twist and rotate now sometimes i do the pace first sometimes i do the corn or the pellet first now i'm going to do um corn first because i've got a good hold of it on here and it's not going to twist so you want to fill about half a pot with your, your corn or pellets dip your hand in the water and get yourself a good size bit of paste sort of around that size and give it a good squash in the middle you want to lay that hook in and push it into about halfway into where you've just made that dimple close it up and the line should be coming out the top of the ball of the paste and like i said i'm going to be moving it from the left because the line will then tip over the left and i won't wrap the line over if i tip that to the right now then the line is going to get tangled over the top and that's a really simple but um easy tip to to remember when you're uh, you're shipping in i do have a back shock so we've got a little bit of wind to try and hold um it straight we're looking for a great bite under and a great bite out my plan is to try and catch a few fish from this angle where you can see across me and then we'll try and drop some close by putting the, the camera over there from a, a different angle and, and hopefully we can get some um extra fish but who knows if they're going to play ball they've been really weird today um so i'm hoping with leaving that side that will settle on that side so fingers crossed let's zoom the camera out and let's hopefully get into some fish okay guys now now i'm obviously left-handed which is not the easiest way for me to fish this side it uh, means i'm gonna have to be off the side of the box i could turn my box if i wanted to um 
but to be honest there's plenty of space on this pallet to the left of me to be able to just put my feet straight down when you're fishing your paste on a longer pole like we are today it's really essential that everything anyway is done smooth and take your time with it but even more so when you're fishing at length because obviously you've got a lot further distance to travel to drop in your paste just move the float gently out of the way the unfortunate thing is the wind has picked up a little touch I have to lean forward to just drop the paste in and then I can sit back and the paste settled now and the mate we, uh, we may get pestered with cruisers and stuff like that fingers crossed we don't but um, fingers crossed those carp are playing ball if they are, we should get some some straight underbites and uh, we shouldn't have any messing. And I always like to just, just drop a ball in. I'm not too fussed about what happens with a first ball. Sometimes you'll get a fish. I'm just going to edge that very slightly forward. We could... Um, sometimes you could you find you'll you'll get a fish first drop but sometimes i always think if you're just pushing in your bait then it doesn't really matter if you drop it in because you just effectively put a little bit of feed in to get them started now like i said it, it, it all varies on what you want to feed with it i'm going corn today they do like corn at messingham um it's a bright bait attractive bait and there's not a lot of heavy feed with it it's you know it's quite neutral um, now what I would say is if you get too many fish in your peg dial down the amount of uh, loose feed that you're putting in because sometimes it can get a little bit hectic if you're getting too many fish in there and just put the pace in it gives them a straight target of your pace rather than more particles and then you just have to feel that as you go as you go on watching that back roller all the time now i can see some what look like swirls over there whether they're smaller fish or bigger fish i don't know it is quite shallow over there fingers crossed just gently lift that float out tip in that paste i think we've just I just tangled the float over. Maybe. Once you got a couple of sets in there, we're pretty much good to go now so this one i've just put some bait out there so i'm not messing about with any more corn that's two little pots and as well as what we fed a couple of handfuls to start with we're now just going to go out with a single piece of paste and hopefully get into some fish go straight into a fish straight away and we're charging it goes straight towards that when you've got a pallet like that it's important to, to steer him out that's what we've done steered him straight out and because we've because we've left that that bait for a while that area looks like there's a few fish that feel safe enough to come onto it and what what I mean by that is 
earlier on we were fishing down the right hand side and I don't want to fish over the top of that bait we caught a lot of sil little smaller fish and I don't want to I don't want to be catching um, the smaller fish if I can help it so a fresh clean peg down there and this one's pretty angry about being hooked not very happy about it but got nice strong gear on just taking his time always keeping an eye on where that elastic's going we, and another thing that's important is we've got a really decent size net you, we don't know what size size cat we're going to catch there may be smaller ones like this one there could be really really big ones so we have a sensible net on which allows us to safely net them and that's a, that's a nice start if we can get him in it's lovely common you just got to be a little mindful uh, when you're on these raised pegs uh, that they have obviously got legs and we don't want them and we don't want to be uh, catching them down on any of those he's not far off now like I say it's good strong gear oh he was nearly in and in and out good strong gear I don't want, I'm not saying you want, you want to bully him, but when you're in the last stages of a match um, and you, you need to put some weight in, this can be a dominating. You've seen me do it many, many, many times. And there we go, that's the first one, which shows you an example of that exact thing. And he's definitely not the biggest fish that there's in this, in this pond. But these, you start getting these queuing up and you'll put a, a really decent weight together and he's hooked just perfectly in that top lip and that will never come off. If, if he's hooked properly like that, they won't be coming off. Like I said, the only downside of these nets for me is I'm obviously short and it's a, a long reach down. Fingers crossed he's going to behave. There's a beautiful stamp paste fish and that's what it's about getting those fish in your nets and on the bank and making the most of that situation but it's that combination of getting all those things right that leads to putting those fish in the net and the fight hard there's no point in messing about when you're fishing pace there's no point in messing about with soft gear if you're going for for carp and you're going from that edge gear up and go for it don't 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 mess about with it they're, they're ready to, t to take it they're not bothered what line you use to an extent obviously you've got to check your fishery rules um, they're not, they don't care what hook you've got they just want that bait and they'll come in especially at this time of night as well in the afternoon so follow that routine we've got a bit of a corn in there got us paste in we'll just follow that routine again get yourself in a position to shift it out <clears throat> and don't mess about with bites boys like you see me you properly hit these bites that were a proper good old whack um give them a good whack and if you especially if you're in a peg like i am today you need to be steering them out now this baytex stuff is is great and you, there's loads of baits that are great out there but um if you want something that's super smooth and easy to mix then it, this baytex stuff's great uh, i've used it in the candy corner in the past um, and had great results you'll, you'll see videos on that surely um, but today we got the the green the, there is a natural color as well and there we go straight away on the drop I didn't even have to strike that one and this is this is what I mean boys if you get them there and you know how to fish paste I'm telling you you can absolutely dominate it and this fish, fish has gone deep and it's just about then taking your time and getting control of them. 
you know they're all good good stamp good strong fish even even the sort of three four pounders they know how to fight in here they know how to fight and so definitely definitely don't underestimate them you know keep that that pole tip low and he's uh, been up a couple of times and they're so they're so strong at, at a camp nowadays the strains that they put through um, they just fight hard and you know they've had rain into oxygenated to oxygenate the water lately and it's it's been warm and they love it they're just ready this time of day as well five o'clock is just grand slam for the old uh, down the edge and in my opinion paste is one of the best best baits for down the edge and you're doing a, doing a good job is this one I don't think he's that big but he's, he's definitely pulling back and this is what I mean sometimes the littler ones fight the hardest a little mirror this one and he absolutely wanted it he took that literally as it hit the bottom I'm looking for the float to sometimes dips under and then settles and then <laughs> it was away I'll be honest though this one is not a pretty one <laughs> and sometimes fortunately you do get that it is uh, what we would call a munter this one and that goes for his size perfectly hooked again in the corner of the mouth I'm gonna get this one back because he's an ugly boy um, and that just shows you exactly what I mean um, what we'll try and do is uh, try and creep the camera to the other side uh, and we'll try and do another angle and uh, see the fish sort of swimming away fingers crossed there's a few more down there So another fish straight away. This one's trying to go for the pallet and we're out. And we're out boys. It's not a big fish this one. But they still all count. Might be an F1 or something like that. Or a small cart. Could even be a, potentially be a skimmer but I doubt it. It has some big skimmers in here. Or bream should I say. just a smaller fish f1 or something it's just a smaller carp actually and still know how to fight when you've got that strong gear we can get them in relatively painlessly and up to perf perfectly in that top layer. i mean that is an absolute perfection paste um paste hookable area to catch them just in that top lip as they suck it in we're gonna again go a touch of corn not too much because there's a i think there's still some more fish down there so again just a little light sprinkling get that mold that paste up nice into the pot and we're good to go and that and this is what i mean when they're there and you can accurately put the paste in <coughs> they uh they don't mess about the bites people say to me oh i get these pernickety bites and and stuff like that and it, it, everybody gets those in pace fishing especially if you're sort of um, in in open water um, and if you've got smaller fish there you will but when carp turn up there is no pernickety bites it is straight under is a straight under bite and my float messing about on me can't quite see if that float is going to work but we're going to have to go with it 
sometimes the float does twist. And, I'd, and when I use a pace float, it sort of stops it from doing that. Ooh, straight on, straight under, straight on. Just didn't suck enough of the paste in there. But I saw the elastic stretch out. So, they're still, they're still there. We're gonna uh, reload, no, no con this time. Just paste, reload, reload, reload. And back out. It's not even giving me a chance to settle my own body um, into a comfortable position, it's that quick. Um, which is what it can be and like I say fishing the, Fishing is easier the closer you can get it to you if you can get them uh, really close on the paste Then that's the, the best Scenario that you can do now what happens sometimes like this one is it's shallow all the way across till you get to the other side so that's where we've used the shielding and and the bit of the side as an advantage proper bite and a proper fish I think this one Ooh, baby jet skis now that one was a lovely bite I did see a massive tail out of there I don't know if this is the same fish Pulling hard, that's for sure. Sink that pole. Great bite that, I didn't even have to strike. That was just literally straight under elastic out. That's how it is sometimes when you face fish. feels a little heavier this one not seen it yet don't think it's massive again but just never know of them the fight they all fight so hard just fight so damn hard you won't believe the size of them sometimes for what for what how hard the fight I'm just standing up a little bit just to get above it so I do not want it anywhere near this pallet it's in Another lovely one in the net, and these full of beans is thrown out the hook. But you can see a decent fish. Let's get him back in, and we'll get the camera back. Maybe we'll do some close-ups and see if we can uh, see that float rocket under. guys into another one feels like a nice fish
just uh, when you've got a short rig on when you're fishing in a pace like this uh, it uh, can be a bit sketchy when they're going to deeper water and they're pulling your pole under bennies is like that when, when you, even if you're fishing two and a half foot down margin or three foot down margin it takes you out to open water where it's like 10 foot and starts nailing it down <laughs> it's well it feels well sketchy This one's uh, I don't know, it's keeping deep and very ploddy. So, no idea what size. I've been wrong all day with these, and I, so I don't actually know what size this thing is. I, my, my instinct is to say not that massive, sort of three to five, five pound, but who knows? seems to be the average of today there is bigger fish and they've been out cruising they're not really settled down the edge I think when we first arrived Glyn had two fish back to back double figures 13 and a half 12 and a half and then nothing um, and we've just had a good day of um, cruisings and F1s um, pretty much with the odd cap thrown in there until later on this one is uh, it is hanging fire like a little bit this one So you need to at all. Not again, not again. <laughs> I do pull hard these fish. And I've got the strong gear on. So I can give him a little bit if we're gonna try and go on doing it something. It's not a bad mirror. Oh. It's a lovely fish. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not attractive, <laughs> but it's, it's a nice fish. Ooh. Definitely not attractive. Yep, this one has a face for radio. I don't know if he's going to let me hold him up, so I'm going to put him back in. And fingers crossed, we can have one last one to finish the camera off. There we go. What's happening is the, the queuing up to get to that pallet, and there's too many of them to actually get to that pallet, and there's that many um, crusions there. By the time they get the nose is down, cruisers have had it. So, but we've hooked one now. Let's try and get him in. Oh, he looks like a lovely fish, actually. Looks like definitely, I would have thought, the bigger, biggest fish of the day, just by that little roll. So, take my time on this. Maybe the best, best fish of the day. Oh, it might be, yeah. Good size. Definitely a nice fish. And he's ours. Lovely fish. Not the biggest today, but he's, he's definitely a nice fish. 
Oh, it might be actually. Well, that is a nice one to end on. Let's get him unhooked and hopefully he'll play ball. Oh, he might just try and jump out of there. One or two. It's not, not a good looking one, that's for sure. Getting trapped between my legs. We're just going to need an escargot for that one because it's just in that muscle. There you go. Whether he's going to let us pick him up or not, I don't know. It might be a nice one to us. Or it might, it might also not be nice. This is the only problem when you've got a, a deep net like myself and short, and short arms. It's going to be a bit of a pain, but we'll, we'll persevere. And... There we go, guys. A lovely, lovely little comment to finish on. It's getting back because he's definitely not happy about it. So there you got it. You can see that it's a fantastic bait, as you would expect from Dynamite. You know, they are fantastic baits super uh, effective re the attraction rates and it's great the mix up it's lovely consistency um and as you can see the fish absolutely love it um we use the green today and not and not the brown but i would equally feel you'd have the same success on that as well um so thank you very much hopefully it's been a little bit helpful to you i've really enjoyed this uh, filming this one it's been it's been fun um hopefully we got some nice little angles for you as well um and if you uh, want to join us on the facebook and uh, ask any questions or post any pictures then join us at angling for you and if you want to go on the instagram at angling underscore for you and see what we're up to and tag us in your photos or videos then do so too as well and if you want to go on the playlist and find any more other videos out there then uh, get yourself on there and have a look um, and if you could like share and subscribe and join the angling for you family that would be superb and until the next one guys thank you very much for watching tight lines.